Okay, welcome back to Mr. Hassan's Maths Channel. In this video, I'm going to go through question number nine from January 2020, Pure Mathematics P2, International A-Level, Edexcel paper. And this question is about um, an exponential curve. So it says, sketch the curve with equation y equals three times four to the power of x, showing the coordinates of any points of intersection with the coordinate axis. So this is a curve which is of a exponential type but it's, it's like a trans transformation of it, slight transformation of it. Um, what's happened is, um, as you can see, it's 4 to the power of x would be a curve that goes through 0, 1. It would look like this. You know, this is what 4 to the power of x would look like. And it would go through. It would go through 0, 1. Okay, this point is 0, 1. We would go through. It wouldn't touch the x-axis. Um, but this is a vertical stretch of that curve. So basically all the y coordinates are multiplied by 3 including this so it's going to end up going through 0 3 okay end up going through 0 3 and we can confirm that algebraically that when x equals 0 y is equal to 3 times 4 to the power of 0 which is 3 times 1 which is 3 so it goes to the point 0 3 for sure okay so now when i draw this then i'm going to just i could have actually just left it actually but anyway, i'll just draw it so when you draw this curve, you know it goes through 0, 3. So I'll just put 3 there. And um, I'll put it as 0, 3 because it says coordinate. So it's better to write as a coordinate. So I'll write that as 0, 3. And the exponential curve has this type of shape. It never touches the x-axis. It gets closer and closer to it. So you're going to make it move away from the x-axis. Let me make that a bit neater. In fact, I'll put the 0, 3 at the end. Let me just draw the curve nicely first. So it's going to look something like this. It's going to go up on that side quite heavily and this side it goes towards the x-axis never actually reaches it you should try to avoid making it going away from it. it has to go towards it so be careful sometimes they're a bit they're a bit fussy and even though it's supposed to be a sketch don't make it going don't make it show that it's going away from it don't make it touch the x-axis this is going to be zero three so you write the coordinates of that point it never touches the x-axis as i said um, that should be fine. That's the curve. Y equals 3 times 4 to the power of X drawn. So sketch the curve. Okay, just completely say that's the Y axis. That's the X axis. That's the origin. And that's perfectly fine. Okay, don't make sure it doesn't touch the X axis. Make sure it curves away. It goes up, increasing on that side. It goes to 0, 3. There we have it. Now, question part B. It says the curve with equation y equals 6 to the power of 1 minus x re meets the curve y equals 3 times 4 to the power of x at the point p. Show that the x coordinate of p is log to the base 10, 2 over log to the base 24. So basically, they're going to meet when um, they, you know, when they're basically when you solve these two equations simultaneously. Okay, so when you, you want to find when two curves or a line and a curve or two functions where they intersect, you have to solve the equations simultaneously. So y equals 6 to the power of 1 minus x and y equals 3 times 4 to the power of x. So you have to basically um, solve these simultaneously. So as they're both equal to y, you can make them equal to each other. But that's only because they're both equal to y. Okay, we're basically what we're doing here is, is substitution. We're saying, okay, replace the y with 6 to the power of 1 minus x. A lot of students have the misconception of saying that, oh, you make the two equations equal to each other. Uh, that's not actually true unless they are both equal to the same thing. Okay, if they're both equal to y, then you make them equal to each other because they're equal to the same thing. All right, so you have to be careful about how you do that. For example, some people say x plus 2y uh, minus 3 equals 0. And like x plus 4, uh, y plus 7 equals 0. And there was an attempt to um, solve this by, by making this equal to that, which you know you could do actually because they're both equal to 0, but you don't get rid of anything. You don't, you don't uh, eliminate anything that's unknown. You, you end up with another equation with x and y in it, and you won't be able to solve it. So the point is not making them equal to each other. The point is substituting one of the equations in place of the other of like I'm, t I'm replacing the y in one equation by what is equal to in terms of x 
that will eliminate the y and I've got an equation with one variable. Making them equal to each other won't, um, in, in this particular case, uh, won't actually eliminate any variables. So you have to be careful how you think about these questions. You don't just make the equations equal to each other. You're trying to eliminate one of the variables so that you can solve and you don't have two unknowns. Okay, so here we've eliminated the y by replacing the y in this equation by 3 times 4 to the power of x. Okay, so you replace the y with, in this equation, by 6 to the power of 1 minus x, and now you've got this equation, which you can solve because there's only x in there. So now there's a couple of ways we could do this. I'll show you two different ways of doing this. I think the easiest way, I'll, try, I'll show you the easiest way first. Now the easiest way, I think, would be to say this is 6 divided by 6 to the power of x using the law of indices a to the power of m minus m is a to the power of so um, is, is the same as you subtract the powers when you're dividing a to the power of m divided by a to the power of n so a to the power of m minus n comes from dividing uh, two numbers in index form with the same base okay you subtract the power so this is like the origin of this would be 6 divided by 6 to the power of x which i can write as a fraction and this is equal to 3 times 4 to the power of x. And if I multiply both sides by 6 to the power of x, I've got rid of the fraction. Um, so I have 6 equals 3 times 4 to the power of x times 6 to the power of x. And I can divide both sides by 3 to get rid of this 3. So I've got 2 equals. Now this is like 4 to the power of x times 6 to the power of x. Now I can rewrite this because I know that a to the power of m um, times m. Um, say b to the power of m is the same thing as a times b all to the power of m so i can rewrite this as 2 equals 24 to the power of x i can rewrite that in that form this is like 24 to the power of x because it's like 4 times 6 all to the power of x okay because of this law i can split this up and I'll bring this together in that way now the question says log to the base 10 Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take log to the base 10 of both sides. We don't normally have to write the base 10 when you're taking logs, but I'm going to do it because the question shows a log to the base 10. If it just said log, that would be fine. So you have log to the base 10 of 2 equals log to the base 10 of 24 to the power of x. And now I can say log to the base 10 2 equals x times log to the base 10 24. And then I can divide both sides by log to the base 20, 10 of 24. So log base 10, 2 divided by log base 10, 24 equals x. And I think that was what we had to show. Yes, it is. Okay, so that's one way of doing it. And that's perfectly fine. I find, I think that's the easier way of doing it. So you have x equals log to the base 10, 2 over log to the base 10, 24. And there is your answer okay now an alternative method of doing this okay would be as follows um, you could have just taken log to the base 10 right from the beginning here so you have log to the base 10 of 6 to the power of 1 minus x equals log to the base 10 of 3 times 4 to the power of x Okay, now that remember that power of x is only for the 4, not for the 3 here. Okay, so now this will be 1 minus x log to the base 10, 6 equals, I can split this up into two parts, log to the base 10, 3 plus, and that will become x log to the base 10, 4. Now I can uh, expand this, so I have log to the base 10, 6 minus x log to the base 10 6 equals log to the base 3 log to the base 10 3 plus x log to the base 10 4. i don't have to actually write keep your writing to the base 10 i just did it because they have it in the question like that now what i can do is i can bring the x's on one side and the non-x terms on the other side so i have log to the base 10 6 minus log to the base 10 3 equals, and I've got on this side, x log to the base 10, 4, plus x log to the base 10, um, 6. So I've brought the, I've brought the uh, 
This is what we've got happening here. I put all the X terms on one side and the non X terms I've left on the other side. Now, these two can be combined together as one because um, of the law, the subtraction law. This can be log to the base 10 of 6 divided by 3, which is 2. And this, you've got X times common factor and you've got log to the base 10. Now, these two together will give you by the product law because you've got addition law. You got these two added together. So when you take x as a common factor inside, you'll be left with log to the base 10, 4 plus log to the base 10, 6. So you can multiply the 4 and the 6 gives you 24. And therefore, you can say log to the base 10 of 2 over log to the base 10 of 24 equals x. Okay, I personally think that this is much easier the way I did it on this side. This is a bit more long winded, but as you wish, you can do it as you wish. Sorry about my terrible handwriting at the end here but um, this this answer here would be perfectly uh, good and if you showed it in this way it would also be perfectly good but you have to be careful with the way you show it because they already give you the answer okay so you have to make sure that you show your steps very clearly you can't just have you know like just write something like that down and then say oh therefore x equals no you have to show your steps clearly how you got to this stage Okay, so there's the answer for question number nine. Um, thank you for watching. The other questions on this paper will be found on the playlist, which will be appearing somewhere over here. Other questions about logarithms and exponentials, um, playlist will appear somewhere over here. Um, if you'd like to subscribe to my channel, click on the icon appearing in the center of the screen. And if you want to see other questions from other P2 papers, click on the card on the top and it will take you some to some other P2 paper. Thank you for watching. And I hope to see you in another video very soon.